of pleasure in life. When there is a pleasurable moment in life, an Ajna gets elated. You can see the elation in his face. He may, uh, he may jump with joy. All those things happen. Whereas when there is a painful moment in life, and Atnani gets dejection, 
you can see the reflection in the form of tears and so on. When I say jnani, a gunajita has developed the ability to withstand the pleasure and the pain in the room. Pleasure and the pain are not are inevitable in the there are occasions of pleasure and occasions of pain because life is always like uh, like waves. But a jnani knows how to withstand the waves of pleasure and pain. There is a shloka about Sri Ramachandra. Prasanna tamyana gata bhishekataha. Tathanamam lau vanavasa dukkataha Mukham bujashira gunandana syami Sadas tu sa manjula mangala prata Prasannatam yana gata bhishekata In Ayodhya, Dasharatha decides to Coronate Sri Ramachandra. And then someone comes and tells him the news. Conveys him the news. You are going to be the king of Ayodhya. Then what would have happened for an ordinary person? He would have started jumping with the joy and oh, I am going to become the king. But Ramachandra did not show any sign of emotion. He just said, okay. Prasannatam yana gata bhishekataha When he got the news of Abhishekha, when he got the news of coronation, he is not elated. His face does not show the sign of emotion. And then, after a few hours, all of you know how the scenario changed in Ayodhya. Mantra, thanks to Mantra, Kaiti. And after a few moments, after a few hours, he gets another news. You are not going to be the king. Instead, you have to go to forest for 14 years. What would have happened to an ordinary person? See, just a few hours back he got the news, you are going to be the king. And now he is getting another news. Not only that you are not going to be king, but you have to go to forest also. He would have got very much depressed, dejected, and also angry. Dejection plus anger. There are room for both the emotions. But Sri Ramachandra is not at all disturbed. Tathana mamlo vanamasa dukkataha His face does not fade when he heard the news of manavasa. Mukham puja shri rakunanda nasyami That is the Mukham puja of shri rakunanda That is the lotus face of shri ramachanda rakunanda This is Samadukha Sukha, accepting pain and pleasure equally.
means a lump of clay, a lump of earth. Asma means a stone. Kanchana means gold. An ordinary person is always interested in gold. Gold means wealth. Wealth gives a sense of security. Wealth promises certain types of enjoyments. Therefore, an ordinary person is attracted to wealth. And he is also busy in accumulating wealth. Even if he has crores of money, it is not enough. This person has accumulated 100 crore rupees. If you ask him, are you happy with your wealth? He will say, I am not happy because this hundred crore is enough for my great grandson. But after my great grandson, what will they do? This is how he thinks. The wealth does not, one does not say enough to wealth. Greed is, a, is one of the most undesirable emotion in an individual's mind. A jnani, a gunagita, is free from greed. He does not see money as an object of greed, as an object of happiness. It does not mean he may not need money. His View of money is different from an Ajnani's view. He just takes money as another need, just like any other amenities in the world. You need earth also, you need air, it is a need, you do not keep on accumulating. Similarly, he views money also, just like any other elements in the world. It implies he is not greedy. Samaloshtashmatanjana. Tulya Priya Priya. Priya and Apriya. Priya means an object that we know, a desirable object, 
is called priya it may be a person who you love or it may be any object any inanimate object in the world it may be wealth it may be a car it may be a fruit anything it may be a dress any object that you love is called priya priya to you what is priya to you need not be priya to someone else priya is always individualized similarly there is a priya undesired what you do not like is called apriya priya and apriya can invoke various types of emotions it is not that priya will always produce happiness priya does not become does not produce happiness always that is why upanishad says priyam tva rotsyati the priya can make a person cry as long as one has love for anything other than atma that priya that object of love can make one cry this is a upanishadic statement because when we do not have a loved object suppose i love a car I am not happy with an ordinary car. We need the best of the car. What is the best of the car? BMW. Or anything else. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what car I like. But I like the best of it. Best of the car. I don't have it. When I do not have the Priya, the car is Priya. When I do not have the car, I have desire for it. I want to get it. And the desire itself makes me restless. As long as I have desire, I cannot sleep well. because even when i go to bed i think of uh, the object i desire so i have desire and the desire makes me restless and uh, when i pursue the object i earn some money make some loan and then i get the car priya priya comes the car has come to me for a moment i am elated i am very happy and i take my photograph selfie with the car all those things happens and then in a few months i know this car is creating lot of headache sometimes there is tire puncture there is problem associated with maintenance so many times you have to give it for service repair emission test maintenance cost and then one day the car fails 
it becomes unusable because of some reason. I have lost my Priya. Or the car is stolen. It is stored away or stolen water. Then I lose my Priya. When I lose my Priya, I start crying. So I lost it. That is why Upanishad says, Priyam parotsyati. The Priya will make a person cry. So the Priya is responsible for so many emotional problems like desire, anger. If someone disturbs my Priya, Someone hits with my car, collides with my car, I get angry with the person. So, Priya can make me cry. Priya causes so many emotional problems. Similarly, a Priya, an object that we do not like, it may be a person that we do not like. Even an apriya can invoke so many emotional problems. You don't like a person. And you don't want the person to be around you. But that same person comes here and sits very next in the very next chair. When the person is sitting very next to me, I am disturbed, he is sitting here. It can cause disturbance. And a priya can cause anger, fear, sorrow, so many problems. Are associated with the Priya. Priya and Apriya disturbs and Ajnana. Whereas a Gunatita is not disturbed by either Priya or Therefore, he is Tulya Priya Priya. Tulya Nindatma Samstotihi. Another description of Munadhi. Ninda means criticism. Atma Samstutihi means praise. Someone praises me, I am elated. Someone criticizes me, I don't like it. Generally, an individual's activities are determined by validation by others, are determined by appreciation by others. We expect appreciation. And we are dependent on appreciation. Then only we do an action properly, a work properly. The dependence on appreciation, dependence on praise.
is another samsa another problem a jnani does not depend on appreciation by others he will do what he feels correct i am supposed to do this and i am doing this irrespective of whether i am getting appreciated or not he is not dependent on stuti samstuti praise in the meantime he is not disturbed by hinda sensual criticism irrespective of criticism of others he will continue doing what is right therefore ೂಲ್ಯಾಂಭಪರಿತ್ಯಾಂಭಪರಿತ್ಯಾಂ ಗುಣಾತೀತ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಇನ್ ಆನರ್ ಆಂಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಆನರ್ ಇರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಆಫ್ whether people honor or dishonor he is not disturbed there may be people who respect him there may be people who honor him and there may be people who dishonor him who insult humiliate the respective of that a jnani is not disturbed in honor as well as dishonor he is not disturbed if someone honors him he is not elated he does not depend on the honor of other people other people should respect me he does not depend dependence on honor is another kind of dependence human people human beings uh, cling to honor if someone does not respect me i am disturbed but i cannot expect the same kind of respect from everyone there may be some people who may respect me ಸ್ವದೇಶೆ ಪೂಜ್ಯತೆ ಸ್ವಗೃಹೆ ಪೂಜ್ಯತೆ ಮೂರ್ಖ ಮೂರ್ಖ ಫೂಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಆನರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಹೌಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ರೀಸನ್ ವೈ ಈಸ್ ಆನರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿಸ್ so if you are entering a murtha's house you are living in his house you have to honor 
whatever he says, if he says pro is right, you have to say yes. Otherwise, he will kick you out of his house. Swadeshe Pursa, Swagrihe Pujyate Mutta, Swagrami Pujyate Prabhu. In one's own village, you know, in a village, the head of the village is honored. But the same head of the village, if he goes to another village, they will not even know who this person is. They will not honor him. <laughs> Swadeshe Pujyate Radha, the king of a country is honored in his kingdom. If he goes to another kingdom, they may not. Vidwan Sarvat Prabhujyate, but a Vidwan, a wise man, a learned man, used to be honored everywhere. Used to be, now I know. But it is not necessarily so. It is a, somewhere there is a shloka. Even the Vidwan may not be honored everywhere. There may be people who have value for his Vidya, his learning. Then they will honor him. But then there is a place where who don't where they don't have honor, they don't, where they don't have value for his Vidya. They will not honor him. Therefore, the honor and the dishonor keeps varying. But a jnani is not dependent on honor and dishonor. He is happy even in the absence of honor, and he is not dejected. Even if there is an insult, even if there is a humiliation, that is apama. Therefore, mana pamana yus tulya. Tulyo mitrani pukshayo. Mitra and Ari. Mitra means a friend. Ari means Shatru, enemy. A jnani, whether a jnani can have an enemy or not. Who is an enemy? There can be two types of enemies. One type of enemy, you hate the person. If I hate someone, he is my enemy. But then suppose I don't hate the person, but the person hates me. And not only he hates me, he wants to create harm to me. Is he my enemy? He is my enemy. He, tries, he, is, he hates me and he tries to harm me. He is enemy. That kind of an enemy, a jnani will also have. A jnani will not have the first type of enemy because a jnani does not hate anyone. Whereas there may be other people who want to harm a jnani, who hate a jnani. That kind of enemies may be there even for 
Now, what is the attitude of a jnani towards his enemies? He has friends and he has enemies. Now, Krishna is not talking about how he will behave towards his enemy. We should understand the difference. How you have to behave towards your enemy. How you have to treat your enemy is a different from what kind of attitude you should have towards your enemy. There is a difference between attitude and behavior. You consider the friend and enemy as equal in your attitude because you see Ishwara. You see the same Atma in both friend and enemy. A friend who wants to help you, you see the same Bhagavan, the same Atma. And an enemy who wants to hurt you, you see the same Atma. But that does not mean you go near an enemy. It is not. You have to keep a distance from the physical. That is why I said our behavior towards an enemy has to be a practical behavior. How we act with an enemy, we have to consider the practical necessity. For example, the Pakistani jihadis are my enemies. I hope we, they are enemies for all of us, not only my enemies. Hope uh, there is no Pakistan Zindabad here. <laughs> they are enemies. Because they are not only, not only they may harm me, they may harm the society, they may harm the world, they may harm our countries. Therefore, they have to be our enemies. We cannot say they are not enemies. In the meantime, there is Bhagavan in the enemies also. When we say Bhagavan is everywhere, when we say Ishwara is everywhere, he is there in the Jihadi also. The same Ishwara is present. Therefore, in our attitude, we have the sameness. We see the same Ishwara. But when it comes to action, when the enemies are crossing the border, we need to shoot them. We cannot say we will allow they are also Bhagavan. It is not possible. That is why, if you look into Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna, Krishna is telling Arjuna, you should be equal to both friends and enemies. That is how he teaches. This is one teaching. Tulyo Mitrari Pakshayo. And in the meantime, he says, Yudhyasva, fight the enemies. Are they not contradictory? They seem to be contradictory. But in the meantime, they are not contradictory. Because he understands the difference between the attitudinal sameness and the practicality of actions. That is why 
there is Ishwara in Tiger also. Ramakrishna Paramahamsa would say, there is Ishwara in, in Tiger also. But that does not mean you go inside the cage and do Namaskara to the Tiger. Do Namaskara to the Tiger outside the cage. Therefore, we have to understand Krishna never tells Arjuna to hate the enemies. Do not hate the enemies because there is Ishvara in the enemies also. But the same enemy from the practical, practical empirical standpoint, the same enemy can be harmful to you and he can be harmful to the society, then you have no other way than fighting the enemies. It is like a doctor amputating a hand or leg of a patient. It is not that the doctor hates the patient. The doctor wants the patient to survive. And the only means to make the patient survive is to amputate sometimes, to do surgery. So, it is so. When Krishna is advising Arjuna to fight, you have to fight. Otherwise, they will be harmful for a greater good, you have to fight. But in the attitude, you have the same attitude. See the same Bhagavan, same Ishwara in both friends and enemies. Om Pur Namadav Pur Namidam Pur Nar Pur Namu Bachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om